Okay, so the first thing we do is we create a horseshoe section separating the top from the sides. Our first section is going to be on the temple area here on the right hand side of the cut. So we're going to take nice small sections and we're going to work back through the sides. So bring the hair straight out from the head. You can bring it out vertically. Keep a good tension. Come in and we're cutting vertically down. So we're taking horizontal sections and cutting vertically. So the key to having your guideline in each section is just keep nice, tidy sections. Keep them nice and small. If you start taking wide sections, you're gonna lose your guide and you're gonna lose track of where you're going with the cut. If you find that the sections are too long here, just divide it into two. So try not to cut beyond your knuckle. Okay, so you can see my previous section. I'm gonna cut as far as my knuckle, bring out my next section and work down again. Move it on to my next section. Keeping the sections nice and clean. It's really important with gents hair then as well to keep it obviously well saturated. Gents hair just tends to dry up so fast. So I'm not over directing here and just bringing straight out. I'm trying to stand also parallel to what you're cutting. Okay. So working back through the ear area. Again, keeping your sections nice. Nice and tense, good tension in them. And bringing your sections parallel towards you. Okay. So it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of hair to cut here, so we want to take it down to a nice kind of manageable length. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of guys coming in with hair this length after after all the coronavirus has all started out. So um, I'm sure there's a lot of customers going to be coming in looking like this in a few months. I always try and send parallel to what I'm cutting as well. It just reduces the chance of over-directing the hair. So I'm just cutting again to the knuckle. Moving on to my next section. And you can see I'll have my guide from the top area here and cutting vertically down. So I like to do the interior of the haircut first and then the perimeter of the cut. Okay, again. Next vertical section, working just beginning to go in behind the ear now into the back area. Again, bringing your section straight out towards you. Standing parallel to what you're cutting. It's really important to keep good tension here. Working right down to the bottom as well. Bring your next section down. So I'm just combing the hair down, separating with my hands, brushing the hair I don't need out of the way. If that's looking a bit too dry, which it is a little bit, I'm going to spray it down. Once it's sprayed down, it makes it much easier for you to separate separate the hair. You can use grips if you like, but I'm, I'm kind of used to not using them. I kind of just use them on the top section so it's not falling down. Bring your next section out. Nice small sections. You don't have to do big cuts. It's much more controlled to do smaller cuts, I find. On your next section. And so on, all the way down. So you, can, you can take as many sections as you want all the way down. It depends on the size of, of your hands or your fingers or, or the width of them.
and keep your discipline as well with your stance. So again, I'm not cutting beyond the knuckle. If you cut beyond the knuckle, you're losing your tension and that's gonna cause inconsistencies in the haircut. So we work temple to temple. You can take these sections parallel if you want to take them diagonally forward a little bit, that's fine too. Whatever, whatever is makes makes you more comfortable. Sometimes people find going going vertical is uh, is more difficult. It's it kind of is more of a strain on the arm. Uh, but as long as you're getting that triangular shape, so it's going to be longer on the top area up here and going into a shorter shape. That's kind of what we're looking for. You'll see as well the, the way I'm holding the scissors is slightly different maybe to maybe what you've normally seen. So this is called the Eastern Grip. Um, the reason I like this way of holding the scissors is it takes a lot of tension off my wrist. So to cut the hair conventionally puts a lot of pressure on my wrist. Um, by changing the, the way I hold the scissors, it allows me to, to put the scissors in a more of a natural position. So not, not the scissors, but my hand is actually more in a, in a natural position. And I can just drop the scissors over the section I'm gonna cut then. If you have any questions on it, you can uh, you can just drop a message in the, in the in the comment box below. I can do, uh, I can always do a short video of how to hold this is this way as well, so loads of video, videos on YouTube about it already, so um, a lot of barbers are beginning to use it and I'm using it for the last couple of months and I've become to like it a lot and I'm quite com comfortable with it now actually. In the last section here. Okay, so now we got to do the perimeter of the haircut. Just tidy up that extra length that we don't need and then we'll, we'll move on to the top area then. Okay, so the next thing we'll do here is we're going to take off this excess length here and we're going to shape it around the ears. Um, going to take a lot of the bulk out with my clippers. This is a wall magic clip. Um, when we've finished all that, then we're going to do our, our detailer, our outliner. So the technique that I'm going to be using here is just clippers over comb. And this is just to take off the, that excess here, the solar hang in the air. So just lifting the comb out, turning it out towards myself almost in a C shape fashion. And that allows me to just go in a little bit closer around the ears, just get a nice polished finish on it. Same on the back area here. Okay. Just gonna clip her over comb off the heavy stuff here and work my way up through the sides. It's obviously a little bit more tricky to do this on a manic head, it's actually easier to do it on, uh, on a real person. So you can also hold the comb out like this and just take off some of the longer here at the bottom as well. But the clip over comb is a great technique. If you prefer to use a, a guard, a clipper guard on this, you, you can also. If you feel it's a little bit safer. So you can see already there's a bit of shape coming into it. So I just move it to the back area. On this corner here, just take away this excess length here. And it just gives the haircut a nice shape and a nice outline. So you can use different tools as well. I mean, if you didn't want to use your clippers, you could use your scissors over comb. Um, or you could do some point cutting. You could use a feather razor. I'm quite comfortable with the clippers, so that's kind of my tool of, uh, of choice for this. Move on to the back part here, the back corner. So I'm just flicking the hair out. And I have a guideline from my last section here as well. You can see here it's what I've cut already. When I bring the comb out, I also have my guide from over here as well. So I'm not just guessing or cutting it off randomly. I am actually working off a guide. So I'm working up through 
the back area here. So that's one, two, three. So it gives me a bit of graduation, a bit of graduation and a bit of blend for probably the, the last inch of, of the hair that's overhanging the hairline here. I'm not gonna maybe go too tight on the hairline because we're gonna use that later on a different cut. Back onto this corner, again using my guideline for my previous section. And working up through it. And just repeat the process then on this side. I'm working up through the cut a little bit as well. I'm going into the cut a little bit. And that's just to give it a bit of a blend, just to basically just connect in. If you go parallel again with the comb, the comb is coming in vertically, so it's coming in parallel to the hairline. And back in again over the years. One, two, three. Taking off all that excess here. Get a little bit of graduation in it. Obviously on a real head you'd be able to bend down the ears, you'd have a bit of flexibility that way, so. But the mannequins are great to practice on, they're great for practicing the techniques. Obviously you can't, uh, you can't beat the real thing like. So that's pretty much all the the weight on the back and sides off. So now we just polish it up. You can use your scissors just to tidy that up if you want to, or you can use your, your outliner or your detailer to finish as well. Okay, so now we're gonna use our detailer or outliner just to create a nice shape around the ears here. I've reduced a lot of the heavier bulk with my big clippers. So now use the smaller one just to create a better shape here. So what we're looking for here is a nice kind of a C shape over the years. So just bring it to the top of the ears. Some customers like it on the ear or over the ear. Just again, in your consultation, you can clarify that with them. So using the very corner of your outliner, just to create a nice shape around the ears. We're just following the outline, following the shape of the ear. Obviously on a real head, you can pull the ear down, it's a bit easier. On the outside here, we're working down through the back. Again, just creating a nice strong shape. And blending that into the top area. If you push the comb in here, it pops the hair out. And any excess hair then, we can trim off with our detailer. Same on the front part here. A lot of people leave out this area here. I like to shape up this area and just keep this nice and strong, especially if there's a beard. We can connect the beard work into the cut. That just it gives them a nice strong finish. It's a lot of the a lot of the things that people will compliment about someone's haircut is the finish of the cut. So that's the detail around the back and the sides. So it's an old saying, attention to detail, but it is very, very true. If there's hairs on the neck area here, keep them all nice and clean then as well. Same again on the opposite side. Push the hair out with the comb and just taking the very ends and work back down. Keep them nice and strong. I'm not going too deep in on the hairline here. We just want to create just a nice shape. Again, you can use a little, little bit of outliner over comb if you like as well. Just to get in around those ears a bit more. What you don't want to do is create any straight lines. You want to keep it nice and soft around the edges. So a lot of guys are coming for a scissors cut you get the scissors work all over um but you can still use your outline around the edges just just kind of make sure that it's okay with them that it's only just just for tidying up the line that's around the edges 
again on the other side just connecting in this front area here into your beard work trimmers over comb just to give it a little bit more graduation a little bit more blend scissors work up through the back so just a bit of point cutting with my scissors over comb working up through the cut just to soften it out a little bit same with the bottom area here I just I don't want a sharp finish I want a softer finish on the back more of a natural finish so I'm not going to use the outliner on the back I'm just going to go scissors over comb but as you can see I'm using the point of the scissors and I'm just chipping away just at the ends really so scissors over comb work for me is probably one of the most important techniques you need to learn just turning the comb out towards you and just working on the ends nice small sections same for the sides in as well Just breaks it all up. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the top area. And the first part we're gonna work on is the crown. And we need to work on connecting the crown into our back section. Again, we're gonna take vertical sections, just leave a little bit more length towards the top and just drop your section. Okay. Divide that section in half, and run your next one. Nice small sections again. So we're using our guide from underneath from the previously cut hair and just working across the back of the head. Leaving a little bit more length towards the crown. So I'm angling my fingers out a little bit so it's almost like a triangular shape we're, we're getting. So vertical sections straight off the head, leaving a little bit more length in the crown area. Then we move on to the other side. Back to your first section. Using that as your guide. Angle the fingers out. So section wise, the width of them is gonna be about a quarter inch. Watch your next one. So all my sections on the sides are going to be at 90 degree angle out from the head. The sides into the top. Um, what we're going to be doing here is bringing the hair out from the head at a 90 degree angle. Again, nice small sections and good tension. So I'm using my guideline from the hair that I've previously cut underneath. And just moving forward. So what will happen is, when I repeat this on the other side, I'll be left with almost a triangular shape at the top of the head. So as I move towards the front sections, I'm starting to over direct slightly. And again, that just gives me a little bit more length towards the front area, which is important if there's any kind of recession area as well at the front. So a lot of guys like to kind of keep a bit of cover at the front. Um, if they're slightly receding, or even if they like to just keep a little bit of height in the front as well, it's good to have that extra bit of length. So I'm just over directing back towards me on the last few sections really. Okay, So now we move on to the top part of the haircut. We've connected the sides to the top, but now we need to connect the top section to the sides. So by taking our sections at a 90 degree angle out from the head, we're left with a triangular shape on top. So this needs to be reduced. So we take our sections as normal, 
straight up from the head and we point cut. So as you can see, we're left with a triangular shape that needs to be just softened out a small bit. So again, same as the sides, keeping our sections nice and clean. So roughly about maybe a quarter of an inch is plenty. And I'm just taking these straight up from the head. I'm not over directing yet. As I come closer to the front, I will over direct my sections. So again, nice and small, straight up. And it's important to keep good tension in these sections as well. Keep moving forward. And as you're doing the cut, use your mirror in front of you. You're always looking for body language, head position, and your own body position then as well. So keep working towards the front, over directing. Nice soft point cut. Two more sections to go. Keep good tension. Keep using your mirror and keep using your guide all the way through. We're just chipping away at the very ends really here at this stage, just to preserve the length of the front. Keep that volume, keep that recession area covered also as well. When we get to the front, just work back through it. Just a point cut on the ends. Just a cross check also. It's nice to kind of go back over what you've done as well, just to, just in case you've you've missed anything. Okay. So that's the, the top section done. Next part now is to dry the hair and we're going to put a pre-styler in it. The product I'm going to be using as a pre-styler is uh, 1922 JM Kuhn. So what this is, is um, it's a paste, goes into towel dried hair um, and it's really good for giving volume in the hair as you blow dry. You can also put a bit in then at the, at the end just after you blow dry as well. Okay, so Okay, now that the blow dry is complete, we just have to personalize the haircut. So at the end of every haircut, I always personalize every haircut to every customer. So we need to go back over the edges here, just to make it a little bit sharper, a little bit more refined. I'm gonna do that with my detailer. The one I'm using today is a wall beret. Just around the edges, get a nice semi-circular half moon shape over the ear. Just gives it a much sharper finish. You can go around the front area here and the outside of the hairline just to give it a little bit more definition as well. I like to use this technique also as well, it's just the trimmer over comb. Just gets a little, little sharp, a little bit sharper and gets a little bit of graduation over the ear area, which is nice. And it just reduces a lot of the weight as well, especially on the scissor. Last thing we do then is we're going to put some Premier paste. And then that's the product that we use as a pre sider as well. So you can also use it at the end of the haircut as well. So just a small bit um, into the palm of the hand. Probably, and we don't want to obviously overload it with products either. It doesn't need a lot because the the product that we put in beforehand will, will give it a nice hold. So this is just more to smooth it off any any straggly bits of hair and just gives it a nice gives it a nice shine. So there's a good hold on this product as well. So it's medium shine, medium hold. I'm not reusing a brush, I'm just going to use my fingers so it's going to be casually styled into place. So it's not going to be too perfect looking. It's nice and casual. So that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, um, just drop me a message. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Frank Hackett Barbering. So I hope to bring you a couple of more tutorials over the next week or two. Um, I could be doing, I think I'm actually doing a live with you this Wednesday. Uh, so stay tuned and I'll give you more information about, um, about the time of that. 
Uh, so thanks again for watching. Uh, see you soon.